first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the Max Prize and also this opportunity to present my work. So, I'm working on metal organic interfaces uh, and which are uh, there in all electronic, organic electronic devices wherever there is a junction between uh, the active organic layer and the metal electrode. And the uh, charge injection across such an interface affects the overall efficiency of uh, such devices. So we study such interfaces uh, with density functional theory and uh, today I would like to present the three systems I have worked on, pentacene on aluminum 001, coranulin on silver 111 and uh, then uh, effects of doping of such an organic layer on metal. So I started my journey with quantum espresso with this system uh, in 2013 so uh, it's very, uh, it's where I started. Uh, so. Experiments for the system was conducted by uh, Dr. Luca Floriano and his group in Electra Synchrotron 3ST. And he had uh, read, uh, performed read, XPS, NexFS, and STM. Instead, I was uh, simulating the results to compare with the experimental results. So I started with uh, finding the most stable configuration of four pentacene on silver, so, uh, sorry, aluminum 001. And, uh, the high symmetry side stop, hollow, and bridge were considered. And again, bridge dash and hollow dash, uh, two additional ones, that is bridge dash is obtained from bridge by rotating either the molecule or the substrate by 90 degrees and hollow dash by rotating from hollow uh, by 45 degrees. And the interesting thing is that at bread site, the molecule is bent into a V shape and uh, the same result is obtained also for hollow dash with apparent delta Z, that is the high difference between the central and the edge carbon atom, around 1.35 angstrom. The most stable site anyways remains the bridge site. So we were wondering what is this particular uh, bending, what causes this kind of bending? And the interesting uh, fact is that it's the matching distance between the central carbon atom, C1 and C1 dash, around 2.82 angstrom, very much matching with the two aluminum atoms uh, directly below this carbon atoms. So this constitutes, uh, pushes the molecule to deform and bond uh, particularly at that V shape with an angle of around 155. And it's also important to uh, note that without including Van der Waals, I was also calculating and it was not giving such a result. So dispersion interactions are really important in such systems. Here I have plotted the Consham orbitals of the gas phase V-shaped molecule and the planar molecule. And what is the main result is homolomo gap has been reduced uh, by half an EV. And there is a lumo plus two, lumo plus three uh, exchange, which we can see here, just by the V-shaped bending, because these are both gas phase. Now on the surface, uh, looking at the molecular orbital projected density of states, the LUMO is heavily hybridized and the main peak lies below the Fermi level at the bridge site. Instead of top site, uh, I have just shown this one because there is where the molecule is planar and the, high, the highest uh, stable site where molecule is planar. Again, where the LUMO lies at Fermi level. Then uh, here the charge arrangements at the most stable site which clearly shows this kind of bonding between the two carbon atoms and the aluminum below where red color shows electron accumulation and blue electron depletion. Uh, comparison between the XPS results for the experiment which is given by the dotted uh, line and for calculation how I was doing is first I calculate the core level binding energy so uh, subtracting the total energy of the gas uh, uh, of the ground state minus uh, subtracted from the total energy of the system with the full core hole at one inequivalent of at each inequivalent carbon atom. So here pentacene has six inequivalent carbon atoms and so it was done uh, for six times. And then to calculate core level shift, as a reference energy, I was taking the weighted average of the binding energies. So the result is that uh, I get six sticks, which has been broadened by using pseudo void profile to get the final spectra. And as we can see, bridge site is in very good agreement with the experimental results. Coming to next surface, so 
From next service, we can um, uh, get two kinds of information, that is the structural information and as well as some electronic information. So first of all, I would like to say about the electronic information, which is, um, okay, so first of all, the, to the, the top panel is the experimental one and the bottom panel is the simulated one. So I was simulating using Xspectra code in quantum espresso using the transition potential approach. Um, what we can see is the background, the shaded one is the gas phase, is that, that of the gas phase. And here the dotted one is also uh, the gas phase. Whereas the solid lines are the adsorbed. Compared to the gas phase spectra, both in experiment and theory, this peak is missing. So the first part of the next surface, which is, uh, so we know that in next surface, we, what we see is we probe the unoccupied orbitals. So what first peak missing is because before uh, in the MOPDOS, we saw that at bridge side, the LUMO is filled and is below the Fermi level. So it's not present there as an unoccupied orbital anymore. So that is the reason why the first peak is missing in the adsorbed case. So this is the electronic information. Now coming to the structural information, the blue curve is the P polarized P polarization and the red dotted one is the S polarization. So for a perfectly planar molecule, for the S polarization, there should be zero pi star contributions. But instead we see in experiments some non-zero pi star contributions. So this indicates some kind of tilting of the molecule. In my calculation, I have some non-zero contributions, but not as much as in experiments. So, it, because this is the, uh, this contrib non-zero contribution comes from the, just the V-shaped bending of the molecule. For this, uh, let us see uh, the experimental conditions because it was very difficult to prepare the aluminum 001 very pure uh, surface and so we were not able to obtain a very um, uh, well-ordered uh, monolayer. So, the Streak, uh, the read from the read is uh, it was very streaky diffraction pattern, so, so a lot of step edges defects were present on the surface, as seen also in the STM. This is um, STM of the uncovered terraces that after the molecule has been evaporated, where we can see uh, uh, some reconstru molecule induced reconstruction uh, shown by this uh, golden lines. So the Long, no long range order domains were detected. So this could be the re reason why we have such uh, a huge amount of Pfizer contribution in experiments. Finally, uh, STM, the simulated STM um, is given here for the bridge, which is corresponding to the experimental image here with very, very good agreement. Also, uh, if you look at the line profile, the uh, V-shaped contribution is also seen in the experiment. So this is a very good agreement. So concluding this first part, uh, pentacin adsorbs in V-shape and uh, uh, we see that the LUMO is getting filled and this is resulting in the narrowing of the next surface peak. Next I would like to move on to the second system which is coranulin on silver 111. And so coranulin is called the bucky bowl because it can be obtained from the Bucky ball uh, C60 by cutting the 20 top carbon atoms. So it has a pentagon, pentagon in the middle surrounded by six hexagons. It's a curved molecule and um, usually one uh, coranulin bonds with another one like, like this, so convex to concave coupling to maximize the pi pi bonding. Instead, on the surfaces, on copper 101, for example, it has been reported to adsorb on one of the hexagons, so in a tilted manner. And on copper 110, it is adsorbing, shown here, on one of the carbon-carbon bonds of the central pentagon. So always in a tilted way. So to study on silver 111, uh, again, the experiments were performed by Dr. Luca Floriano. Uh, and we, what he was saying was in scanning tunnel microscopy, the molecules were very mobile, so it was very difficult to obtain the STM uh, images. However, uh, the, um, he was saying incommensurism of, and with the periodicity of around 3.6, uh, 3.6. And in the diffraction pattern, he obtained three by three uh, periodicity and as well as this uh, circles, which are equivalent to 3.6 periodicity. So however, in simulations, what we decided to do is, uh, we decided to calculate a three by three and a four by four. So uh, again, using quantum espresso, 
and I was also calculating XPS and XFS uh, to compare with experiments. So, for the 4x4, four four, we had a wealth of uh, configurations to test because we were doing uh, three tilt angles at a zero, zero degree pentagon, a 10 degree, which is on the carbon carbon bond, and 20 degree is one on the hexagon on the four high symmetry sites, so resulting around 96 configurations. Instead for three by three, because of steric hindrance, we could, uh, the only possible configurations were eight. So we did all of these calculations and the most stable ones were uh, for four by four, in all cases, the molecule was falling flat in the sense that uh, on the Pentagon, it's adsorbing on the Pentagon as, and uh, uh, whereas on, um, in the case of four by, uh, in the case of three by three, it was always adsorbing on one of the hexagons, so with the effective tilt angle. However, going from 4x4 four four to 3x3, three three, there was a gain of uh, 9 milli EV per angstrom square in energy. Now looking at the XPS, what we can see is, uh, so these ones shown outside the graph is that of the uh, uh, gas phase, because coranulin has three inequivalent carbon atoms. And here is a plot between core level shift and uh, carb height of carbon atom. In the case of uh, four by four, where the molecule is flat, what we see is that the C1, C3, difference between the C1, C3 uh, core level shift has reduced. And going from flat to tilted, so in the case of tilted, you have uh, these uh, many dots because um, when you have it tilted, you have the more number of inequivalent carbon atoms because I cut the molecule in this way and so the whole half of the molecule has been considered. And we can see that the core level shift uh, increases with increasing in height of the carbon atom from the surface. This is because of the reduced screening as the topmost carbon atoms are farthest from the surface. So that was an interesting observation. However, the, both the three by three and the four by four were giving more or less similar results with respect to the experimental curve, which is the blue one. Now coming to the next surface of such curved molecules. Um, so before I was telling that in the case of a flat molecule, it's easier to get the structural information because one it's, once it is pretty flat, the pi star contributions are not there in S polarization. Instead, in the case of a curved molecule, what happens is since it is already curved, there is an intrinsic curvature which, however, gives some pi star contribution in this polarization. So we should be careful while extracting, for example, tilt angle from such, uh, for such systems. As shown here, this is the next surface for a gas phase coranulin. So for, uh, as in this position or also in the flat line position on the pentagon, you can see that, uh, however, there are non-zero contributions. Now, while projecting the LUMO onto the PZ, PXY of uh, the inequivalent carbon atoms, however, we see that there is an average tilt angle of 20 degrees always present, even if the molecule is flat. Now, looking at the adsorbed uh, next surface, so the blue one is the experimental one and the green four by four and red three by three. From uh, experiments using store analysis, they were extracting uh, a tilt angle of 28 degrees, whereas from my calculation, the, ones ex uh, the values extracted at 23 and 38 degrees, but for 23 degrees means that beta, that is the tilt angle of the central pentagon is zero, which means that it's uh, flat but with the int intrinsic curvature. So what does it mean this 20 degree in the experiments? It could be, it could be between these two cases. That is, it's neither three by three, neither four by four, but somewhere in the middle. So the average tilt angle could be 20 degrees, th which is obtained from the previous graph, for example, here. If you look at the 20 degree uh, true tilt angle, you get a value of around 28 degree in the store analysis. So concluding this part, uh, store analysis is ex extended also to the non-planar molecules and um, uh, average tilt angle could be 20 degrees uh, for this particular system and, and it's incommensurate around 3.6 periodicity. Now coming to the last part, uh, after talking about the organic molecule adsorption on metal. Now I would also like to say about the doping, effects of doping. So we have an organic monolayer. Now what happens when you dope such a monolayer? So you can uh, dope in order to um, 
tune the energy level alignment of such interfaces. Doping of organic semiconductors is different from doping in organic semiconductors because in organic you have uh, very low concentration like parts per million, but in organic cases, since the conductivity is already very low, we have higher concentrations like even one or two atoms per molecule. And it's it, however completely different scenarios. Um, so here in my system, PTCD is the molecule and potassium is the donor. So experiments were performed by uh, uh, the group of Frederick Schiller University, uh, Professor Torsten Fritz and his group, and they, they were performing STHM, LEAD, DRS, NISS, W, uh, and UPS. I was performing some of my calculations during my abroad period in uh, uh, TU Graz, where I started with VAS, but then uh, on return to my home university, I was continuing the post um, analysis using quantum espresso and YAMBO. So experimentally, they were observing two uh, most st uh, two most stable um, phases of uh, potassium doped PTCD on silver. So PTCD, um, which, which are given here, so two potassium atoms per uh, molecule and here around three potassium atoms. So, so this was the starting point and I was, sub, I was calculating these systems with exactly these values measured by the experimentalists from STHM, clear STHM images. So they were performing the STHM because by conventional STM they were not able to see the potassium atoms because the, the resolution is not very high but with STHM they were the first people to uh, see or image the doped atoms. Started with the PTCD or silver, very, very well known system. Uh, PTCD LUMO is at Fermi level uh, uh, and it's a very well studied system with PTCDA uh, taking around more than uh, almost two electrons from silver. So, for K2 PTCDA, I was uh, simulating the exact cell obtained from the experiments and uh, what we can see is unlike the PTCDA uh, where the oxygen are bent towards the silver here, the potassium is interacting with the oxygen and bending away from the sil silver surface. I also simulated uh, the STM images and we can see it's in perfect uh, matching with the STM as, which, as well as HTHM where we can see these dots are the potassium atoms. Calculated adsorption heights. Uh, so these are the calculated and these are the uh, uh, ex uh, experimental ones and we can see the, the shaded ones are PTCDA before, it's before doping, so the oxygen are below and after doping as we can see the, it has bent in the other direction in the U shape. Very good agreement with the experiments. Now the second doping stage was a little bit tricky because in the experiments they were seeing uh, like around five dots. However, according to the deposition rate, they were expecting three potassium atoms per molecule. However, when I simul uh, simulated this system, what happened was the resulting structure was not what we were expecting as, uh, what it was not what uh, we were seeing in the experimental results. So we were thinking since there are like five dots present, maybe it's five potassium atoms, and I simulated also five K5 PTCDA, but then, it happened that one of the potassium atoms started to go below the PTCDA thereby tilting and if there was a tilted PTCDA it would have been clearly visible on the experimental images. So this is also not the case. Then I tried a K4 PTCDA and the exp ex uh, agreement was excellent. So the result was that it is four, KP, four potassium atoms per PTCDA, not three, not five. So the question is why or where does it come this central feature in the STM images? Then uh, the, result, the answer is that it is nothing but a, a, the LUMO of a K4 4 plus cluster, which means that you have four potassium atoms arranged in such a manner, and if such a cluster is charged with uh, a, a, one, a positive one charge on each of them, you have the LUMO looking like this. So it is nothing but in the center is accumulated charge density. That is what we image, uh, what they image in the experimental STM. So in the STM it's not, nothing, it's just seen as a blob also here, but here instead for STHM, it has, uh, it, it can be seen as five dots, but the central dot is not a potassium atom. 
Coming to the electronic properties of the system, so gas phase PTCDA uh, is the first panel, then the second panel is PTCDA on silver, where the LUMO is at the Fermi level, so a monolayer of PTCDA on silver shows a metallic character. Instead, uh, with uh, two potassium atoms, the LUMO is narrowed and shift below the Fermi level, thereby we have a metal to semiconductor phase transition upon doping. Then on further doping, that is the K4 PTCDA, uh, the LUMO shifts further below the Fermi level. And it's, uh, the calculated density of states are in excellent agreement with the experimental UPS. Uh, so here I was plotting the K-resolved density of states uh, projected onto the atomic wave functions belonging to the atoms of the molecule. And what we can see here, it is normalized to a one where uh, the, the most red color uh, represents wave functions which are localized at the molecule. So in the first graph, the PTCD on silver, we can see that the bands are heavily hybridized and uh, heavy dispersion. Moving to K2PTCDA, it becomes more um, uh, localized from the molecule, which means that the hybridization has reduced. So adding, PT adding potassium, it has somehow decoupled structurally and also electronically the molecule from the silver. Further, K4PTCDA, we can see that the bands are almost flat, that is, dispersion has heavily reduced. Now this uh, narrowing of the um, orbitals have also been seen in the optical spectra. So here they have the experimental optical spectra and I have calculated the uh, uh, spectra by Yambo at the independent particle random phase approximation level. And uh, it's not quantitatively comparable, but qualitatively we have captured all the main features, which is the PTCDA on silver at the black curve has a single feature, broad one. Instead, the red curve has two peaks resolved and shifted to higher uh, energy, which is also here with two peaks uh, uh, shifted to higher energy. And again, the blue curve is narrower and shifted again to higher energy. According to the increased potassium doping, you have reduced hybridization with the silver. So concluding, uh, two stable doping series were found for x equal to 2 and 4. And we found for the first doping stage a metal semiconductor phase transition of the organic layer. And K atoms decoupled PTCDA both electronically and structurally from uh, silver. So thank you for your attention. And I would also like to thank Dr. Gudo Fratesi, who was my supervisor during my PhD and also contributed to quantum espresso developing. Thank you.